The Jet Super Dash, an elegant exploitation of the Valorant physics engine. Truly poetry in motion. Before I give you a bunch of different lineups, I'm gonna first explain the science behind the Super Dash so that you can even create lineups of your own. So there are basically three different types of Super Dashes you can do. And the first one we're gonna take a look at is something that I'll call the Edge Dash. So to do an Edge Dash, all you need is a wall and something sticking out of a wall that you can stand up on. Basically, all you need to do is dash right into the wall and jump. And then you should go pretty much straight up. So here I've got a useful diagram to help me explain the science behind the super dash. So here on the right, we got a top down view. And here on the left, we got a front facing view. Yeah, we dash against the wall and we want to jump and then we go straight up. So the timing of the jump, we want to time it such that after we jump, we want to hit with our feet right on this edge, right on this corner of the edge. And if our feet perfectly hit here, then we'll go straight up. And if we jump a little bit too late, then we'll just bump against this and nothing happens. And if we jump a little too early, we'll just fly over it. But if we jump just slightly earlier and we hit the edge a little bit higher, then we can preserve some of our horizontal momentum. Instead, we'll move in a direction like this. So to time it to go straight up, you have to jump a little bit later. And if you want to time it, so that you preserve some momentum horizontally, you have to jump a little bit earlier. So the timing of the jump is affected by the, your distance to the edge and also the height of the edge. So if you're really far away, then you want to dash and then jump. While if you're a lot closer, then you jump and then dash. And the edge dash can be performed pretty much anywhere where there's a wall and edge, so even here. So in this case, even though we're super close to it, we want to dash and then jump because the edge is really small and we go straight up but for some reason the edge dash doesn't work on all edges for example here on this pizza box no matter how many times i've tried the super dash it just doesn't work so for some reason some edges just don't work next up we have the slope dash so for the slope dash we need a wall that we can dash against here's one and we also need a slope so here in icebox we have this slope you can tell it's a slope because when I jump up, then I slide off of it to the, towards the right. So basically, I want to be dashing against the wall and hit the slope midair. So here, the timing's really easy. You just walk straight into the corner, and you take a few steps back, and you jump and then dash pretty much at the same time. So for the slope dash, the timing of it is a lot easier than the edge dash, because in this case, we don't really have to worry about where we hit the slope. You could hit it here, or here, or here. It doesn't matter. As long as we're dashing against the wall, and then we hit the slope midair, then we'll just get sent in the direction parallel to the slope. So in Icebox, the reason why we go straight up rather than parallel to the slope is because actually the geometry looks a little something like this. We have the slope, and then we have this little wall that extends up. So our horizontal, horizontal momentum is cancelled out, and we just end up going straight up instead. So here in Ascent, we have another slope. Uh, you can tell it's a slope because once again, we get pushed off to the right when we try and land on it. And here, in this case, we don't have this wall that sort of stops our horizontal momentum. So in this case, we're going to be sent straight up there. And yeah, all we need to do is hit the edge, hit the slope while we're in air. So I'm going to just walk off and instantly dash. And finally, we have the elbow dash. So for the elbow dash, you need this elbow shape where everything's flat and you have this gap here. And you want to stand on one side of the elbow and then dash into the other side of the elbow. And as you can see, I got a lot of momentum parallel to this edge. And so to keep that momentum, we're going to updraft right after we hit, the, hit this edge. And you get a lot of momentum. So the only difficult part about the elbow dash is getting the angle correct and the timing of your updraft correct. So if your angle is too steep, then you'll just fly over it. And if your angle is too shallow, then you'll just get stuck. So you pretty much need to have a lineup in this case. So here in Ascent, uh, my lineup is that I just look right there at that triangle. And then, yeah, I dash. And for the timing of the updraft, if you updraft too early, then you won't have a lot of momentum. And if you updraft too late, then 
Oh, she just gets stuck here, so you need to practice that a little bit. So for the elbow dash, all you need to do is to dash against this really long edge at the correct angle. So technically, you don't even need to have this elbow shape right here. It's just that having this elbow makes it a lot easier because you can typically stand in a specific spot and have a specific lineup where you look and it makes it a lot easier. So technically what you could do is you just stand here, walk right off the edge and instantly dash to get the momentum. But it's just that doing this, it's a lot harder at the time because you need your feet to be at pretty much the same height as the edge. So I could also do it right over here against this edge by just standing here and walking off and then dashing at the right angle. Now that we understand the basics of the super dash, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can find your own lineups for super dashes. So the only two things that matter for the super dash is the angle that you face the wall at and the timing of the jump. The height does not matter at all. So, and generally as well, I found that the closer the angle is to the wall, the steeper it is, the, the more momentum you get, the higher you'll go. But the angle doesn't really make too huge of a difference. And it only really matters if you really need that extra bit of height. So when finding your lineup, it's really helpful to be able to get into the, act, into the exact same spot every time. So in this case, it's super easy. I just walk straight into this corner and then I found my spot. We want, we want the angle to be as steep as possible, but we still want to be able to move across the wall. So we'll start here, for example, in this corner of the brick. We try and dash and we see we don't move. Okay, then we'll try this corner of this brick. We try dashing and then it works. So now we know that the most optimal angle is somewhere in between these two points. So let's try around in the middle, say over here. That doesn't work. So it's somewhere in between here and here. So let's try over here. And that works. Okay, and this angle is probably good enough. So we can use this as a lineup. So now that we have our angle lineup, we need to find the correct timing for the super dash. The way that I find the timing is I see if I jumped too late or too early. And if you jump too early, then you'll just jump right over the edge. While if you jump too late, then you'll just slam into the edge and nothing will happen. So you can use this to experiment with the timing and find out what works best. And in this case, you need to dash and then jump almost instantly afterwards. All right, now I'm gonna go over some advanced tips and tricks. So here we have a wall and an edge, but the only problem is that it's too high for us to jump up onto. So instead we can use our updraft. And then we have a cheeky, unexpected angle. But timing a super dash with the updraft, it's a lot harder than timing the super dash with the jump. And the next tip I have is a technique that allows you to land any edge dash very consistently. So normally you have to learn a lot of different timings for all your different super dashes that you want to learn. But with this technique, it's the same timing with every super dash. So to do this technique, you basically need to jump, glide, and then keep holding your jump button even when you hit the ground so that when you walk off, you're still gliding. And then you face against the wall, you walk off, and you dash. So this technique also makes it a lot easier to hit super dash like this against this edge. So instead of having to try and time it with your updraft, which is a lot harder, you can just walk up here, even save your updraft, make it a lot more consistent. And pretty much the only downside to this technique is that it doesn't send you as high as if you do the super dash normally. So to illustrate this, I have this lineup over here. And if I do the dash normally, and I get pretty high, I can see a little bit into mid, and it's short. But if I do the floating technique, then I don't get as high. I can only barely see into short, and not really into mid. So in some areas, you have slopes, like right over here. And you can see it's a slope because we slide off of it. But the problem is that there's no wall over here. So you can create your own wall. So you can have your sage wall like this, and it's really important that it's perfectly 90 degrees parallel to the slope. And then you just wanna jump and dash. And then it works here. You can get really, really high. So you can also perform a super dash using a Killjoy bot. So that means that anywhere where you have a wall, you can just put down a bot and then do a super dash.
All right, so starting off in Ascent, this is probably one of the best maps for Super Dashers. There's a bunch of useful ones. Start right over here. Uh, I use this lineup. I look right here, and then I dash and jump. And it sends me here. I can peek mid, and look over here. And here's one that can be situationally useful. So let's say you're trying to retake on B. You can get up here without using your updraft. And people won't usually expect you to be here because they didn't hear you using your updraft. But if you have your ult, then another thing you can do is get up on here and use the glide technique and you dash. And then you'll get a really weird off angle because they won't expect you to be that high up because you didn't use your updraft and they won't really expect it. So you can also get up here with a super dash. And once again, they won't really expect you to be up here because you didn't, they didn't hear you using your updraft. You can also do a super dash over here against this wall and using this as an edge. So you just dash against the box and then jump. You can also super dash off of this using the glide technique, but you will have to use an updraft. You can catch anybody on mid off guard. So for this one over here, you dash against this wall and hit this edge. So I usually just line it up over here and look there, and then I jump and dash. And you can get pretty high up and see most of sight. So it's pretty useful for uh, post plan situations. And you can catch the diffusers off guard. But this super dash is pretty hard to time. So you can also just use the glide technique. And you won't go as high, but you can still see pretty well into sight. But you still get a lot higher than if you just double up draft. And there's also this one in spawn. You just walk into this corner, continue holding W and A. Jump, and then let go. And then you stare right here at this little patch of dirt above the brick. And then you jump and then dash. And then you can get pretty high up, see a little bit onto mid, see onto short. And it's pretty good. So this one over here, it's uh, pretty situational. But let's say you know that there's a guy in mid cubby. Then you can jump over here, use the glide technique. You can get pretty high up and see anybody hiding there. You can also hit a super dash on this side using the glide technique. And you can yeah, see into heaven. But it's not that useful because you can just normally see that with one updraft. However, you are able to see into a lot more of the site. Because normally you can only see this much with double, after, double updraft. But then if you do the super dash first, you can see into a lot more of site. So over here, if you know that somebody's in heaven and you have ult, then you can try and catch him off guard like this. So normally with this slope dash over here, uh, we can do this. But the problem is we get stuck over here because there's a little lip over here. So what we can do is we can displace our dash by placing a sage wall and instead we'll dash up there. But now the problem is that there's an invisible sky mini skybox over here. But if we go a little bit back, then it's gone. So what we can do is cancel out our horizontal momentum by having our, our sage stand right over here. Okay, so you want your sage to stand right against the wall. And you don't want her to stand too close to the slope. So a lineup that works over here is that you just line up on this line over here and stand against the wall. So we can get pretty high up here and seeing short, get some free kills there. So in split, there are a couple of useful ones. So right here in spawn, we line up against this white line here. And we're going to dash on this motorcycle as the edge. And then we look at this little white rectangle here, and then we dash and then jump. And then using our updrafts, we can see into mid. And it can be pretty good if you know that they hold mid a lot. So right here, there's another pretty useful one. You just basically want to line up on this line. And then look at this blob of pixels. You can see there's this little square thing here. So you look at the right edge of the square. And then you jump and then dash. And you can see anybody hiding on ramp. And it's pretty useful if you know that they peak ramp a lot. So this one right here, it can be situationally useful. But it allows you to get a lot higher and see into screens. Because normally, if you just use double updraft, and you can't really see into screens. So let's say you're defending on A. 
and you know the enemies are pushing here. And you can have somebody smoke and maybe use an Astro Suck or a Sage Slow to stop their push for a while. And then you use the Float Technique, hit this dash right here. And you can also use your Updrafts. And since there's a smoke here, your enemy is probably going to be waiting around here and you can get some free kills. So this one here in ropes, it's pretty situational, but it can be useful if you know somebody's holding here and waiting for you. And then basically you just line up right here, look here, and you dash and jump almost at the same time. So in Fracture, there's pretty much only one super dash that I found to be useful. So you stand up here, use the glide technique, and you dash and use your updrafts. And you can use this as attacking if you know that they usually hold tower or on these boxes here. But I found that it's much more useful in a post-plan situation because you can probably get a free kill on the fuser. So this one over here, it can be useful if you know somebody is in drop. You can catch them off guard with this, but it's extremely situational. So in bind, there aren't that many useful super dashes. And that's because the skybox is really low, as you can see. So even if you have a spot where you can do a super dash, then you won't go that high because you just get blocked. But there still are some situationally useful super dashes. So right over here, you can peek here, even if you don't have any updrafts. And also this one over here, you dash against this wall, use this as an edge, jump and then dash. And you use your updrafts, and then you can see a little bit onto site. And it is a little bit better than just using updrafts, as you can see. So you can also dash right over here, catch somebody off guard in lamps, heaven, or CT. So in Breeze, there aren't a lot of useful ones, but there are a few. So right here, you walk into this corner, you stare at the tip of this rock, and then you dash and then jump. And you can see into mid-window. You can also look into mid-window by lining up right over here. And you stare at this line over here, and then you dash and jump at the same time, pretty much. You can see into window. So right over here, you can use a super dash to get up here without using an updraft or surprise anybody in McDonald's. And then obviously, you can also do the same thing here. So here on A site, this one can be useful for retake. You jump up on here and use the glide technique. You can catch somebody off guard there by pyramids or cave. And you can also do something pretty similar over here with this dash. So Icebox, it's a pretty good map for super dashes. There's a bunch of different useful ones, like this one right over here. You look into this corner here, take a few steps back, and then you jump and dash at pretty much the same time. And you should be able to look into Kitchen. You can look into B. And you can peek anybody on Boiler here. We can also do the ramp dash right over here. Get right into this corner, stare at the top left of this light, take a few steps back, and then jump dash. If you time it right, you can get all the way to the skybox. And you can peek boiler at a alternate angle if they expect you to be there. You can also do a super dash over here. So you get right into this corner, look at the corner of this box, and then dash and jump. And then use an updraft, you can peek into mid or peek into B. So here on B, if we have our ult, then we can jump up on here, stare at this corner, and use the glide technique. And then aggressively peek here or catch someone on yellow. You can also do this one. Just glide, dash, catch someone on snowman, mid, or kitchen. So here in A site, we can get into this corner, stare at this corner, and then we jump and then dash. And we can get around here aggressively and catch people off guard. So right over here in Boiter, we can use our glide technique to go straight up, peek here, and here. You can also just do this for two updrafts, but you just won't get as high. Alright, so, so right over here, we have a sloped surface because we slide off of it. So we can put the sage wall over here and then dash like this, and we get all the way to the skybox. And here, it can be pretty good for a post-plant situation, um, but you can also peek into mid 
or catch somebody rotating over here. So Haven is not the best map for super dashes because everywhere you have all these jutting out roofs and also these beams. So whenever you want to do super dash, you'll just get blocked by it like this. But there still are a couple of useful ones. Like right over here, you line up against the third post. And then you look at this edge of the tree and you jump and then dash. And then you get sent pretty high up. You can look into heaven. You can also use your updrafts and look into CT. You can also use your dash over here in B. And you can get up on here if you don't have any updrafts. And you can do the same thing right over here. Alright, so that's pretty much everything I know about the Jet Super Dash. So hopefully you guys learned something useful. Uh, let me know in the comments if you did. And thanks for watching. See ya.